Hello, my name's Chris. And I'm Linda. And we are here about to get into one of these little helicopters and fly off over to the Twelve Apostles. This is part of our great ocean road adventure. Chris surprised me with booking us into a helicopter flight. Uh, we had gone down to see the uh, Apostles um, down by the water, and now we're going to take another view. Yep, and away we go. So. So we're just going to narrate this little trip. I actually had the camera running the whole time in my hands, just taking a little flip high def camera. And um, as we fly off here over the, the fields, whoa, getting dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> There's you. All I'm all time. excited, <laughs> as you can tell. Taking shots uh, on your iPhone. Yeah, so there were four of us in the helicopter, the trusty pilot, um, our friend from Vietnam. Korea. Oh, Korea. Uh -huh. Well, thought I'd rook a rack a Russell Crowe. <laughs> Uh, we met him when we were down uh, by the water, and he was asking us where the helicopters were. And funnily enough, as uh, luck would have it, we ended up in the same helicopter with him. Yeah. So it was a little Robinson R44, um, little four seater, and you can see as we're flying over here, you can just see those big you know, the rock towers there of the Apostles. Not actually twelve of them. Nope. The um, how many were there? There were nine. I believe there were nine. There were only ever nine. There were never twelve. Yeah. And one collapsed. Um, and there are now eight. They're really stunning structures. Um, isn't there a similar uh, thing in PEI? I have never been there. You have, for the Canadian reference. Um, are there flower pot? Uh, I, I never saw them. If they were. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, it's absolutely stunning to look at. The coastline is just so rugged, and you can see just what years of, of uh, aggressive waves lapping at the shore can do. Yeah. It's so pretty. Yeah. And like, if you look over that direction there, you can see it's all like farmland over on, on one side, and then it just kind of drops into the ocean. And this bit we're flying over now is called the Lockhart Gorge. And you can see those huge eroded um, bays where the ocean's just gradually chipping away at the edge of the continent. It was really nice to be able to see this from the air because we didn't get to Lockhart Gorge on our drive and we certainly didn't get down to see it as we did with the first two apostles. No, it's called running out of time and money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a little township, you can see there's a beach there and a little township was, uh, what was the township? Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> it's going from my head. But it was a spectacular day too, and uh, as you might be able to tell by the lighting, it was late in the afternoon. I think it was what about five thirty, six o'clock yeah, when yeah, we were doing this, and the lighting was just phenomenal. Both Chris and I like you'd like to take a good picture, and uh, the lighting was just terrific for that. And the day was was perfect, just to be able to see yeah, it. Look at from those the waves air. rolling in; it's incredible. So those cliffs you can see there, uh, gosh, uh, I don't know how to put a number on it. They're, they're enormous. We actually climbed down to the base of some of them back up near the Apostles. It took us about five minutes to walk down the steps that traverse the, the hillside. But if you look out here, I think you've got a, a shot of uh, just looking out to the water and just how expansive it is. You just see water forever. Mm. But look at that. There's a, there's a cave there and you yeah. can see that a big chunk of the cliff has actually fallen out of the cave and then you, it's not hard to then see how that then erodes into one of these these inlets, these little bays, like you can see that one there in the bottom of the picture there. It just kind of erodes away and, and leaves these things. And you know, someone said to me, it'll be real sad when when all these rock structures eventually collapse. And I thought, well, no, by the time they collapse, there'll be, there'll new, be new ones, ones. taking yeah. place. Yeah, and this is great. And, and you know, no doubt the ones that are there now were once coastline. So this is just a completely ongoing process of the land just eroding away and you know, falling away further and falling away further. That that road's in a bit of a precarious spot when you think about it. Mm. I'm always saying about the uh, history of the area that they had uh, at one point... A lot of shipwrecks along here. Yeah, well, I can imagine. Uh, but as far as the, what they were going to do with it and, and uh, they were going to close it off to tourism... Is that oh. piece of information that you I don't remember really that. Oh, that's the little town I was thinking of with the beach there. Oh, okay. That's the town we drove through. We were going to stay there. We couldn't find any accommodation. Just... Imagine that. We were in the height of, of the travel season. You know, on really nice weather and, um, and we couldn't find a place to stay. Yeah. <laughs> we hadn't pre-booked anything. Yeah. But... 
Now th this area down here, this is um, the, the southern, what would you call it, like the underside of Victoria. So as you go from um, Cape Otway, which is the lowest, most southernmost point of Victoria, uh, over west towards, uh, towards South Australia. This is what the coastline is. And in fact, the co this is what they call the Great Ocean Road Drive. It really is stunningly spectacular. There's so many uh, little towns along the way that are just you know, beach after beach after beautiful beach. And uh, the drive is stunning. You see rocky coastline and every five, ten minutes you want to stop the car and take another photo and just take it all in. Yeah. It really is spectacular. Yeah. Now, I haven't actually watched this footage back <laughs> since I took it, so we're kind of just narrating this as as we watch it ourselves for the first time. Ooh, but beach. You know, in, in an area that it has you know, had terrible fires and, and drought and that, it's incredibly green and, and lush this year. And, um, you know, we certainly had fantastic weather in our travels through Victoria. We had originally wanted <laughs> to go the north. Year, Canadian. This is the second time you've mentioned the weather. <laughs> yeah, we had originally wanted to go north and, and go up through Queensland up Noosa Way and, and as you may or may not know that Queensland has been uh, experiencing horrific flooding because of weeks and weeks of, of rain and just terrible weather so we just decided that there was no sun in sight going that way so we decided to go south instead. Yeah we hit the jackpot with the weather. You, you really get a sense of the expanse of the land there from this height looking out over the plains like that. It's all really rich farmland. The flight was what about 15 minutes in length, and it was just—it uh, well, was wonderful because it, it, it took 14, us longer. 41, than, according to the length of yeah. this video. <laughs> uh, and you know, here you see just the, the beautiful blues of the water. There's just so many shades of blue and green, and it just goes on forever. Uh, just stunning. Now that rock you can see down the bottom there—you can see that there's there's like a piece of land, and there's like an island of rock, um, just there. Uh, that was what was called London Bridge. And there used to be a land bridge between the, the mainland and, and that island. And you know, aptly named London Bridge because it went falling down. Yeah, exactly right. And it collapsed um, in 2006, I thought it was, could be, Six, I'm not sure. Yeah. But a, a couple of years ago it actually collapsed. Uh, and there were people stranded out on the island part after it collapsed, so that would have been a bit scary. But they were rescued and they were fine, but yeah. yeah. But, uh, it could have all turned out rather badly if they'd have been a little bit um, by the side of that time frame. You just look up the coast and you just see how sweeping it is. It's yeah. just... Sorry for the jiggling in the video footage here. The chopper was actually uh, vibrating quite a bit. As they do. <laughs> As they do. But it was nice to be up in a helicopter. It's only my second time being in a helicopter. My first time was uh, flying out of Vancouver and up over the mountains and, and back down Western Canadian coastline. So to see um, the, the Southwest Australian coastline was uh, a nice change of pace. Yep. And you've been up in a helicopter before this. Yeah, I've actually, I, I, I did this very flight um, when, when my son was just a, oh, probably four or five years old. Yeah. Um, you sat on my lap so I didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to like that. But yeah, I've done a bit of heli skiing as well, so I've been in and out of the occasional helicopter. They really We've are got impressive. a lot of altitude here now yeah. compared to before. We're, it's, a, it's a wonderful view when you come this high. Yeah. It's too bad we couldn't read the altimeter to see where we were. But it was funny when... Uh, we ended up landing the helicopter, and they have people that that uh, escort you to and, and from the helicopter, and and you know and chat with you. And there are other pilots who do this once they've maxed out their hours for the day. And I was talking to one gentleman, and I said, "Is that a Canadian accent?" And he said, "Yes, it is." And he said, "Oh, you too?" I said, "Yep." Where are you from? Toronto. Where are you from? Toronto. <laughs> So it was, it was quite too funny that there I was in the Ocean Road, Victoria, Australia, taking a helicopter flight, <laughs> Look at you. Ch chatting with somebody who was from Toronto. Yes, I was very excited. I was going to say, look at you, but I guess look at your teeth. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good at aiming that camera. Mm, or other places, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> um, 
so here we're coming back up now. So this is back up. Uh, scan back up near Lockhart, I think. You have to think it's not long before those little bits poking out there become standalone yeah. towers. I read somewhere it's eroding at the rate of about two centimetres a year. Mm. Which doesn't sound like much, but. Um, That's under normal circumstances, though. Mm. I think it will ever be close to tourist traffic to you know go down. We're really lucky. We went down a place called Gibson Steps, and um, it's a stairway that traverses the the side of the landmass there. Um, yeah, and give, it would be just looking at this photo here. Gibson Steps would be if you can see in about the middle of that image. There's the shadow of a cloud on the land there. Um, yeah, so it would be just the other side of that shadow up into the sort of the far side and be where the steps go down onto the sand. Sorry, carry on. Uh, but you walking down there and then walking around, like, yeah, these land masses don't look all that big from the air, but being <laughs> down there, you, yeah. you really appreciate the magnitude yeah. and, and just the, the strength of, of the waves and, and the sea and just how rugged beautiful but how rugged it all is and everybody was getting their, their pant legs soaked in that because the tide was coming in you get the occasional wave that just came way <laughs> up mm. and people were you know you, you could tell when the wave was coming in because there would be the squeals of people running to try and avoid it I'm glad I recorded this because I gotta say watching it back the second time um, I don't know it, it, it's you take a lot more in, I think, just seeing it. It was really good to have actually done it, but yeah. it's, it's good to watch it back again, too. Yeah. Well, it's different experiences, too, because it, it just being in the helicopter and feeling the, the sunlight and, and you know, hearing the helicopter and just seeing the whiteness of the waves. The, the video was good and all, and I'm really yeah. glad that you took it, but you know, it just, no, it's, not it's the same, nothing but it's, it's, like the it's experience. Good so I can see one, two, three. trying to count these apostles. Get out of the way. <laughs> the Korean guy was funny. He kept turning the camera around, taking photos of himself so he can have a photo. <laughs> and he had the same camera as us too, which yeah. was a good thing. That's how we actually started talking to him when we were down. We had climbed down the Gibson Steps and we're down on the beach there. He asked us if we would take a, a photo or two of him in the area. I guess that's the, the challenge of traveling alone. In fact, if you look down there, can you see it there? That's actually, you might see some little dots on the sand there. Yeah. That's people. Uh, and that's actually where the steps go down. So you can walk down from the top of the cliff to the bottom of the cliff. And we're just circling around here. Look at that. Uh, just spectacular. So we're circling around here, coming back in over the land to, to, to land the heli. The heli. The heli. It's a as Parker used to say. Or a helicopter, <laughs> as our Prime Minister says. <laughs> With an A. Helicopter. Hela. But it was over far too quickly, but really a stunning experience and the highlight of the trip. And we had many highlights. It, it was just a gorgeous, mm. gorgeous country. And. Um, Got a few places on the list to go back to. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it was just a lovely vacation. And yep. So here we are coming into land. It's, it's as you come into land here, see the see the uh, the, the, the the concrete circles. circles. We're going to land on one of those. One on the right. I just if you watch this, you just have the feeling that you're coming in on like a a, a gondola on a. Um, mm -hmm. It's like coming in on a gondola ride. Yeah. He's a good pilot. Richard was his name. Yeah. I didn't catch that. I just read it on the label that was above the door. Oh. 